Hi there and uh, welcome. My name is uh, Carl Sjölund. I'm here from uh, Nairo Dynamics uh, to talk about uh, our uh, road health product and using crowdsourced data to improve ride comfort and uh, safety. Uh, as an outline, I'd like to start with some uh, brief uh, motivation and then uh, I'll dive into the technology that we uh, uh, develop uh, with an overview of the complete system and then some details about the major components. And finally, I'll write, like to wrap up uh, use, uh, with some uh, less technical but uh, interesting questions of data supply and uh, some use cases. First, I'd like to show this graph. It shows uh, some, um, some, some interesting statistics where we, we, we can see a quite a strong positive correlation between uh, the, the roughness of the road measured in IRI, the International Roughness Index, and accident uh, frequency. So uh, uh, even though uh, correlation may not equal causation, this is still a um, sort of a strong motivator for uh, keeping our roads in a good condition, I think. Um, and to do that, uh, we start by measuring. So we, so we monitor the road surface condition, and today that's uh, done uh, using uh, a special, special measurement vehicles, uh, quite complicated setups with uh, laser measuring equipment, and, um, and we, we drive these on the roads uh, and, uh, and measure lots of details. These are good, but uh, they are few and, uh, and quite expensive to, to build and to operate. So, uh, so we can only monitor, monitor uh, small parts of the road network. And so, so what, we pro what we propose is to uh, replace these uh, or augment these using a fleet of connected vehicles uh, ordinary uh, consumer vehicles uh, that can report data about the road surface uh, and uh, do that in real time. So, an overview of the system that we're building to perform this task. Uh, it starts with the in-vehicle algorithms. Uh, those uh, do some monitoring using the existing sensors in the vehicles. To, to produce data about the road quality. We then send that uh, to our backend, probably, or most, in most cases, by a, a, a reception provided by the uh, OEM, the vehicle manufacturer. Then we receive that into our cloud, where we uh, uh, treat the roughness data, and the obstacle data, and also friction data, and we, we do our processing on that and we build a state uh, of the entire road network where we uh, uh, keep track of, of the roughness and of the existing obstacles that we can detect. And then uh, we can build a complete map view that we can then send to uh, both uh, uh, back to the vehicles and also to road contractors and road owners uh, to, to guide uh, maintenance operations. So, uh, the in-vehicle algorithms. We have two major components of the, of the road health system. Uh, the first one is the road roughness estimator. Uh, here we, we classify the roughness of the road uh, using the International Roughness Index which is basically um, a model of the longitudinal roughness of the road. So that's uh, uh, the, the variation in height uh, over um, a stretch of road um, for, with some, f some frequencies filtered out. So we're maybe not as interested in a long slope, but rather small variations in, uh, in the height of the, of the profile. Uh, we estimate this using sensor fusion uh, based on the existing sensors available in the vehicle. We use the IMU, we use wheel speed information uh, and uh, some other uh, vehicle sensors. We uh, then output a continuous measure of 
the longitudinal roughness of the road. Uh, the other part of the road health system is the road obstacle detector. Uh, this identifies potholes and speed bumps and can also indicate uh, the side of the vehicle that they were, they were detected. So we again use sensor fusion, we uh, use the wheel speed signals, IMU signals, other, other available signals, high-end sensors if, if they're available in the vehicle. Uh, and we can then output precise detections of where obstacles uh, are located and together, together with some quality signals that we use to, uh, to better merge and uh, handle these obstacles in the back end. Then uh, the cloud system. So the first part of the cloud system is getting the data into the cloud. Uh, measurements uh, from, uh, from our in-vehicle algorithms are combined with position information from the vehicle GPS and they're group grouped into reports uh, from the vehicle that cover a stretch of time, maybe 30 seconds or thereabouts. Uh, these reports are then sent to the OEM specific cloud. Uh, so most uh, vehicle manufacturers today have a, a cloud where they collect uh, diagnostic data from connected vehicles and we use the same, uh, same connection for, uh, for our data. Uh, the OEM then forwards the data to the Naira cloud uh, where we validate the data. We check the format, we check the quality, we check that the data hasn't been tampered with. Uh, and once accepted, the reports are ingested into our uh, backend algorithm pipeline. The second part is the map matching. Uh, since the map is represented as a graph with nodes and, uh, and connections, uh, while the GPS positions that we get from the vehicle are points, we need to do some, uh, some matching to, to get from one representation to the other. And this is where the, uh, the report length is important, because if we get a, a longer report than just one point, then we can use the path uh, traveled by the vehicle to uh, uh, better match it to, uh, to the, uh, the map. Uh, we use map data that is provided by the, by the company here, Technologies, which is a common map supplier for the automotive industry. And we use uh, this path-based map matching to, uh, to go from, uh, from the GPS positions to the map. Uh, finally then, we aggregate. So uh, for the roughness aggregation, we first get the reports that have been map matched here to, to the segments A and B. We split uh, or group the measurements by road segment and for each road segment, which may be so a link in the, in the road network, for example, uh, uh, part of a road between two crossings uh, or intersections. So uh, uh, yeah, and for each such map segment, we, we keep a state of the cur our current estimate of the roughness and uh, with each incoming measurement, we update the state. Finally, we group the output from, uh, from a number of segments into tiles that we can then send as output to, uh, the, uh, to the consumers of the data. Here uh, is an example of, uh, of the output from this algorithm. This is uh, Amsterdam, uh, where we have uh, uh, we have filtered the, the smaller roads, so these are only the larger roads, and we can see that uh, each uh, part of the road network has been colored with, um, uh, with a different color depending on the, the measured roughness. So we go from a purple, which is a very low roughness, uh, as you can see on, for example, the, uh, uh, the main motorways, uh, up to uh, a red dark red issue where for, uh, for the very rough road segments. And uh, this is, for, for Amsterdam, that's usually uh, cobblestone or, or uh, brick roads, uh, which have a very high roughness index. Uh, finally, some, 
some uh, notes about the infrastructure that we use to implement this cloud system. Uh, we base as much as possible of our infrastructure on open source components using uh, public cloud resources. So uh, we use the Kubernetes uh, container orchestration framework uh, to manage our, uh, our jobs. Uh, we use a Kafka, Apache Kafka streaming platform uh, to handle the, the message passing, uh, both in from the OEM clouds as well as internally between different services in our uh, cloud. Um, we use the Apache Flink uh, stream processing framework to do most of our aggregation uh, processes and we store data in the distributed SillaDB uh, database. Uh, currently we're running on AWS, uh, but that's uh, uh, as we use the Kubernetes uh, orchestration, we, uh, we are trying to be as cloud agnostic as possible um, while still using uh, the good parts of, uh, of the cloud that we're on. Um, now then, uh, how do we get the data into, into the system? Um, we have currently two, two major uh, data providers. Or, the, the first one, which is sort of the development phase of this system, are the aftermarket test fleets. So we have um, OBD dongles, basically little um, pucks that we can uh, put into vehicles. Uh, and uh, we use, use these mainly in taxi vehicles here in Sweden. Uh, since 2017, we've built a fleet of around 1,000 vehicles uh, that report uh, data to us. Um, and then we also have a collaboration with a telematics provider in the Netherlands uh, where we have approximately 20,000 vehicles right now in a test fleet uh, that all report data to us. Uh, then the next phase, the sort of production phase here, is uh, getting our algorithms and our reporting into serious uh, vehicles. So production vehicles from, uh, from major OEMs. And uh, we're, uh, we, uh, these will be rolling out starting this summer in, uh, in Europe. So, uh, so we're very excited about that. Uh, some figures about this. <clears throat> the total road length in the EU 28 countries is about 4.9 million kilometers. <clears throat> and we're hoping to have, by the end of 2021, about one and a half million uh, vehicles on the road where are reporting data. Um, with an approximate uh, driven distance per vehicle in a year of uh, 15,000 kilometers, uh, this gives us some very interesting numbers to compare. The traditional road scanning measurement frequency is once or twice a year. Uh, and only on the major roads. On average, with this fleet, we would go get 12 measurements per day per road segment, on average, of course. Uh, so that's a, a huge difference in magnitude, and we're, we're hoping this will be a real game changer. Now then, who will use the data? The final part of the, of the equation, so to speak. Um, we think we have two major challenges that I'll talk about. The first one, and maybe the main one for, for the road health system, is the road owner and contractor challenge. So the road network in Europe is aging. In most, many parts of it were built quite, a, quite some while ago, and uh, this is starting to show. Maintenance costs are high, but they're still not sufficient to keep uh, the roads from deteriorating. So, so now more than ever, it's a question of how to make sure that the money you spend on maintenance of the roads is money well, well spent. And the road health package is, uh, we think, of great help for, uh, for road maintenance. We identify the worn down or degenerating road surfaces we find the most severe potholes in need of repair. Uh, we monitor the long-term friction of the road surface, and we can show the actual experience of the end user, of the driver, 
for the uh, for the maintenance uh, purposes. So uh, this gives us uh, a lot of advantages compared to traditional monitoring uh, methods. We get, of course, unparalleled coverage in terms of kilometers. Uh, we have um, we can be more, far more cost efficient than existing measurement systems. We can have a higher update frequency, and we can enable the right action at the right time to reduce maintenance costs for road owners. Another challenge is for drivers and autonomous systems. With increasing automation, uh, more of the responsibility of the driving is handed over to automated systems in the car. As a driver, you may have a feel for the surface quality uh, of the road, and we need to make sure that the automated systems in the car that help you drive also have the same information to provide a good service. Um, we can do this in the most basic ways. We can do a driver alert. There's a pothole ahead on the right wheel side. Uh, we can do routing information to, to ensure that you, is, that you get a smooth ride from A to B, avoiding the worst obstacles or the, the roughest road sections. Uh, we can help control AD or ADAS functions. We can adapt speed for uh, steering and braking capabilities uh, to, to keep uh, within limits. And we can use it to control suspension systems, uh, both for active and semi-active suspensions. So that's, uh, that's the pitch for road health from uh, Naira Dynamics. Um, Thank you very much, and I hope you have some uh, interesting questions for me.